shall we pray? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and mercy, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for this morning's scriptures that were read to us. And as we meditate upon them, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, inspire us, illuminate our dull minds, elucidate our hardened hearts, so that we may know the truth, and the truth truly set us free. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. This morning, we are going to look from Hebrews chapter 4, and we are looking exactly at one particular word that caught my eye, and I wanted to speak on it. Hebrews chapter 4, the verse is this. At, uh, verse 15. Oh, sorry. Uh, 14. Seeing then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. And my topic will be Jesus the Supreme High Priest. And before that I'd like to tell you about something about this epistle to the Hebrews. We do not know who the writer is, though we know who the author is. The author is God. But we do not know. But to whom it is written, we know. It is written to the Jewish believers in Christ. If you read Acts chapter 2, we know that devout Jews from all over the known world has come and they witnessed the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And they went back to their homelands and they were taught, they were taught about uh, Jesus and his ministry and his purpose. So the writer is writing to the various Jewish people who are living throughout the Roman Empire to indicate that uh, Jesus is the Son of God, he is the ultimate high priest and he is the one whom we waited for and he has come. So it was written to Jewish people not to Gentiles. That we must understand. And therefore, you will read a lot of Old Testament portions in the Hebrew from the very beginning. So he will be teaching uh, uh, the Jewish Christians in the first century that their faith is based totally on the Old Testament. You, you get a point. Because they were, throughout generation, they've been taught that Torah is the book of God. And suddenly now that Jesus has become, the word has become flesh. And now he is the one. So he is teaching the Hebrews. That is why it is titled the epistle to the Hebrews. Alright. So they understand the Bible. And they understand the Mosaic law, the old covenant. So to explain to them the new covenant. This letter was written. All right. We last sermon, if you were to watch my YouTube, you would have seen I was talking on the superiority of Jesus over all other prophets, angels, and men. This today's reading will be Jesus Christ is the supreme high priest for all. Being Christians. We do not have that concept of priesthood and uh, uh, the nature of the priesthood. And when Luther introduced the reformation of the church, he retained the priest, the word. But later on, people didn't want to call the pastors as priests. They want to call them only as pastor, pastor, pastor. But if you read Romans, Paul writes and says that we are made priests because there is a theological experience 
and a practical knowledge why the one who does this uh, or celebrates the communion is called a priest. That's very important. Because if, if you look at the old order, if you look at the old order, you had the high priest, then you had the priests in the temple, the Levites. So we as Anglicans try to follow as much as possible to the setup of God's law. And uh, Jesus Christ is the high priest. And we all, all of us, are priests in a way. That is why we call in our church the pastor as a priest. To remind you that there is a supreme high priest. Alright, that's very important. So to understand the role of a high priest, you have to tell deep into the Old Testament and to the system God set up in Mount Sinai and mediated it through Moses. So we have to understand that. In the Old Covenant, there are two elements you must know. One is blood, one is the high priest. These two are important. If you understand this, then you will understand the New Covenant which Jesus set up this is my body which, shed, uh, which is broken for you. This is the blood which is shed for you. And he becomes the high priest to mediate it. So you, these two things are very, very elementary and the foundation of the Old Testament faith. And the blood sacrifice and the high priest are revealed in the New Testament in the person of Jesus Christ. If you remember, Jesus Christ's mediation of the new, test, new covenant was done on the Passover night. And it is called the Last Supper. Why it is called Last Supper? <laughs> Why you call it Last Supper? Jesus' last supper Oh, Jesus, the last supper with his disciples. That is physically. But spiritually it is not. It is the last supper of the old covenant. Finished. The old covenant is being finished by Jesus Christ. That is the last act. That same day, the veil that was shutting up the people from the Holy of the Holies will be rent. It will be from rent from top and bottom and it will be open so people can enter that is why it is called the last supper because that was the last act of closing of the old test old covenant the new covenant has become in effect now you you get the point now many people do not i have asked even the bishop i asked what do you mean by the last supper the last supper is the dinner jesus had with his disciples no it is the last one Jesus did away with the Passover, the old Passover. Of course, it lasted for another 40 years. <coughs> In the year 70, July, it is the last, if the temple was no more and there was not given a single high priest or a Passover till today. Because Jesus has become the Passover. He's finished. That is why he was able to tell at the cross, it is finished. It is not only the forgiveness for the sins, the atonement has been given. Not only that, even the old covenant is finished. It's the new covenant. We are the people of the new covenant. And in that sense, we are the new Israel. You understand? Which engulfs everybody. But God's promises to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob will be fulfilled by their descendants who are the physical Israel. So that part of the policy, I mean, the prophecy will continue. But we have a new covenant and a new high priest. And that high priest is Jesus Christ. Now I told you the two elements. Number one was blood. Why blood? When Adam and Eve sinned and they discovered their nakedness, their guilty feeling, that's the right word. 
to cover it up they took leaves and covered themselves and the leaves will be there a day that's all maximum a day that's all it cannot be a permanent cure so what did god do god covered them with clothes made out of leather uh, skin if you want to have a skin you have to kill an animal an innocent animal died so that the naked parents can be covered the sin can be covered the covering of the sin is by the blood shed by the innocent animal and that is happened in garden of eden and that is what was taught to moses and the jewish people but the problem is this you see the mic is here you all can see the mic can you see the mic now cannot it's covered but is the mic still there yeah. the mic is still there isn't it yeah. this is what the old testament did the blood of the innocent animal the sheep the lamb or the goat was or the turtle dove was cut and was put in so it covered the sin but the sin is still there sitting there it is not gone so it was a temporary measure you you get a point ah uh, if the temporary point and blood is very important blood is the life of a being see blood does many things as a doctor i know blood carries nutrients blood carries the oxygen for the nutrient to be burnt in your cells then the blood removes the waste products from the cells and brings it to the kidney to discard or to the liver so to detoxify so the blood is life you see you can live without an eye you can live without a ear you can live without one kidney but you cannot live without blood do you know that any organ can be put in a machine heart lung machine and you pump in the blood the machine will do the job a lot of comatose people are kept alive only by that but they need blood if the blood is not there nothing will be done so life is in the blood and that is why you should not shed blood or eat blood and the bible says the life is in blood and jesus christ said i am life so the blood of jesus christ is life you get a point so that is very clearly understood huh eh? so when one commits a sin there is a penalty for it and the penalty is life of that person and by that measure all of us are condemned to death is there anyone to save us from this condemnation yes and is jesus christ he is the only person other than adam and eve who were created who were born in this world without sin adam and eve were created and they did not commit sin and therefore the devil came to tempt them and when eve deceived and committed the sin and adam willfully he had a choice god the father or the pretty girl you know this is the problem all men face parents say no la the family not good la this is not la the family got asthma la i know the grandfather had mental disease la. no i want her she is pretty you have to choose her that's what adam did that's what we do and that is why the bible says in romans <coughs> the sin entered into a human humanity through one man adam so the sinning nature the sinning nature is passed on to the child by the father not by the mother so next time your child makes any mistake anything wrong anything don't tell her you know you are like your mother don't ever tell that you say you are like me because i passed the sinning see the bible elevates the woman to a very much thing and actually uh, 
the women was deceived and I, I looked at all the language, most of the languages I said what is a woman called a young woman is called only in Tamil language I found the deceived one Vanji Valiba is for girl Vanjia is for women whether she was a deceived one or deceiving one I do not know I've been living with a woman for 46 years. Still have to find out. I don't know about Salvaraj and all that. <laughs> all right. So, we have the sinning nature. When Jesus Christ was born of woman, because he was told in Garden of Eden that the seed of the woman will destroy the devil. And Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. He did not have a physical father you understand and therefore the devil has to come and tempt him because he don't have the sinning nature do you get my point now that's why the devil you know i used to think when i was young i when i read the story of adam and Eve, I, oh, if i had been in adam's place i would not have done till i met a pretty girl <laughs> I said when I was 15 years old. Before that, the nature of man. Huh? What? Repeat what you said just now. I, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. So, you can look at the YouTube later on and it comes, you can see. It's being recorded. So, that sinning nature is in us. We never teach any of our children to tell a lie, to steal, to fight, to be envious, jealous, angry. We never teach. We always teach good things. Why we never teach these bad things? Because it's already in them. A contrary to many people's faith that the child born is innocent. The Bible says no. <clears throat> Even the child that is born has the sinning nature at the appropriate time and the circumstances permit then it will be exhibited that is why the devil doesn't come and bother us don't ever tell me the devil tempts you it is our sinning nature that tempts us and that is what in Romans chapter 7 Paul says I by coming a Christian I have a law the spiritual law that operates I understand but at the same time in my body in my flesh I have a, another law always fighting with my law the, the law says, be like Job, put a covenant with your eyes not to look lustfully at another woman. But my body says, my eye says, the last of the eyes says, look at her nicely. You wish you are younger now to marry her. Or you see a car. You see anything, the covetousness just comes up. And it is in the thing, it will have to die. And it will die only when we enter into the grave. At the same time, we have the spiritual law that operates. We know the right and wrong. So every time I think badly, I talk badly, I act badly, I commit a sin. And I need an atonement for it. And the Bible says, if you read Romans chapter 7, he says, who will deliver me from this wretched life? And then he says, I thank God the Father. He says, he didn't I thank Jesus Christ. He said, I thank God the Father. Why? Because he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die for us, to pay the penalty for us, to relieve us, to deliver us, to redeem us. Thank God, it says. That's very important. That is the importance of the blood. And the Jewish people did not know it. They thought by giving a blood, it's okay, it's finished, because they never understood the underlying factor or the underlying truth that Jesus' blood will be the only blood that will be acceptable to Jesus Christ, I mean, to God the Father. And therefore, the blood of Jesus Christ is powerful. That is why we see there is power. There is power in the blood wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. That is why we sing it. And we sing it without understanding this. But today you would have got that thing. So blood is very important. <clears throat> and this system which God set up 
for offering the blood of an innocent animal, then you need a mediator to offer it to God. And therefore, he set up a priesthood. And that priesthood is from the tribe of Levi. And Aaron became the first high priest. And the priest, high priest himself must be from the people. Now you understand why God has to become a man. The high priest must be come from the group of the people for whom he is officiating it. So Jesus Christ to become the high priest of the humanity has to become a human being. Many people ask why can't just God forgive like that. No, he already has a system and he has to follow the system. And therefore, like Levi was chosen, the tribe of Levi, Levi was chosen from the 12 tribes to become the priest and the high priest. God has chosen Jesus Christ to become the high priest for whole humanity. He has to come from the people. So first what he must do, the high priest, he has to offer a sacrifice for his own personal sins and then take the blood. He once a year enter into the uh, Holy of Holies and offer the blood. So the sins of these nations will be forgiven or covered up, not forgiven, covered up. Just now I demonstrated how it is. Now comes Jesus Christ and this has to be repeated every time. Every time it has to be repeated. Every year on Yom Kippur, that is the day of atonement, this has to be repeated. This Day, this has to be repeated year after year. You, you understand? And the high priest will die and the new high priest will come and it will go on like that from the tribe. But actually, this system, though covered the sins and took away the wrath of God from the people, it did not answer the fundamental question. What about the sins? The sins has to be atoned to be propitiated. Now, just now I told you, this is the sin. Alright? Now, it is removed. Where's the microphone? It's not here. You, you get the point? Yeah. The blood of Jesus Christ takes it away. That is why he says, I will remember your sin no more. You will be like from east to west. And whenever I was thinking, when I was a small fellow, east is Japan and west is America. Then I went to Japan. I talked to people. Oh, America is in the east. Malaysia is in the west. Huh? When Malaysia, I said Japan is the east. There is no east and west, you know. That means there's nothing. It is not there. If you go to America, Japan becomes the west, and England becomes east. You go to England, America becomes West and Japan becomes East. That is why he says, I will throw it away from the East to West. That means it should be wiped up completely, it will not be there. Now you get a point? East to West. Alright. And then, the penalty was postponed in the Old Covenant. Not done away with. It was postponed. But now, it's done away with. Now, the high priest has to enter the Holy of the Holies once a year. But Jesus Christ came and offered himself as the ultimate Lamb of God. That's what John the Baptist told him. You know, when first time he saw him walking, he said, Behold the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. That is important. Jesus Christ shed his blood and he not only shed his blood, before he shed the blood, he told his disciple, took the wine as a symbol and said, look at this wine, red in color, it represents my blood and it, my blood will be shed for the forgiveness of the sins of the whole world, whole world. I was watching a comedy scene. The comedian was tied up, put the hand behind, and 
and the crooks were beating him up. Then they found he is not that guy who should be beaten up. So they want to leave him and go. So this comedian asking the fellow, please let me go, la. untie me and let me go. The villain fellows, the crook said, we never even tied you. <laughs> we never tied you. He <laughs> just put it like that. You are so frightened and you think you are tied. And he said, you are not tied, you can go. The world is like that. We think we have committed sin. Yes, we do commit sins. We have committed sins. We will be committing sins. But the redemption is already given to us. And still many people will go around this place, that place, and do this, do that. I will they do everything possible under the sun except to come to Jesus Christ. And you can do anything you want. Your sins have been forgiven. All you have to come to the right high priest and ask him and he will give you the good news that your sins are forgiven, you are set free, you can go. And that is what the high priest do. You remember when the lepers were healed, what Jesus Christ said to them? You remember the ten lepers? One of them was a Samaritan, the nine were Jewish people. What did Jesus tell them? Go and show yourself to the high priest. Your sins are forgiven, but still you have to go to the high priest. And the high priest has to declare that you are forgiven and you have become my child. That is why John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 12 says, Those who believed in the name of Jesus Christ, to them God gave the authority to become children of God. Today, you have come to the church. You are listening to me in your homes. You have come to the <coughs> Jesus Christ and you have come to the right place, Mount Zion, where Jesus Christ died. And there you have accepted him as your high priest and he delivers you. You see, it's very important because many people do not know that why did Jesus tell the lepers, you must go to the high priest. They have been cured. <clears throat> but the Samaritan came, he didn't go to the high priest. He came to Jesus Christ to worship him. You understand? The Samaritan understood that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Redeemer, but not the nine Jews. They went away without thanking God. Alright? So Jesus Christ sacrificed his own body. And now after that, <clears throat> on the third day, he rose bodily from the grave and ascended into heavens. That is why we read in the earlier portion of it. The Son of God, Jesus Christ ascended into the Father's throne through the heavens. The first heaven, the second heaven, the third heavens, and then he entered. I know about the three heavens. After that, his Bible only talks about the throne of God. Because Paul says, I have God taken up to the third heaven and saw things which is not lawful for me to utter. So there are people who are taken up, but they are not supposed to talk about it. But still people come and hallucinate and talk or they went to the throne room. Nobody has gone into the heaven except the one who came down from heaven. Please believe me. It's in the Bible. Nobody has seen the Father except the Son. Nobody has seen it. People can say anything they want. I went, I saw God the Father and say, well, I have a book, I think I must bring it one day and show you. Written by a Singaporean fellow. He said he went there, he saw God's throne room, then he saw the bedroom, and he says God can lie down. He lie. What nonsense. Psalm 1 to 1 says, what does it say? The keeper of Israel neither slumbers, no sleeps. If he doesn't sleep, doesn't slumber, he doesn't need a bed. Hello, are you with me? So you must be catch people like that when they talk. So Jesus Christ entered into the term. That's a scene Daniel saw. You know Daniel in chapter 7, he saw it, you know. And he saw a son of man coming to him, given dominion, authority, power. That means he can forgive all sins. He already shed the blood. In Revelation, John, the same scene. But here he sees him as a lamb slain. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. So yeah, <coughs> it is there. So Jesus Christ is the supreme high priest for two reasons. 
He shed His innocent blood, His pure blood, His powerful blood to forgiveness of sins. Number two, He went into the very presence of God, in the presence of the throne of God. I can tell you Jesus Christ is there because the first martyr of the church, Stephen saw it and he declared it as they were stoning him to death. He said, I see the heavens open up and I see the glory of God sitting on the throne of God and on his right hand stands Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. To him I'm going to give my life. And he breathed last and died. I, right now, Jesus Christ is on the right hand side as of God the Father, as our solicitor, our advocate, pleading our cause. So we be ready. All right, that's very important. Because Jesus Christ understands us. Because he loved us so much. Bible says many times he had compassion over the people. He had compassion over the young men. He had compassion and he wanted to give us the right truthful way to walk. And yet we rebel. That's in our nature. We have rough necks and stony hearts. We rebel. We rebel every time. But the good news is <coughs> the penalty for that has been already paid. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, accept what he has given and take it and be free. The good news is this. Jesus Christ has given all authority, all power, all dominion and he can do anything he wants and he has chosen to forgive us. That's the good news. Number two, somebody to go to the justice of God, system of God and say so and so has been taken the blood of Jesus Christ and pleads for the blood of Jesus Christ and uh, Jesus is forgiven and now he should be set free. And that solicitor, that advocate is our Lord Jesus Christ. There's nobody else. Nobody else has gone into heaven. Whatever people might say, I can tell you from the authority of the Bible and the word of God, Jesus Christ is the only one who has gone to the throne of God. And now he did, you must know, understand one more thing. Why the bodily resurrection is very important. Why the bodily resurrection? Because he has to represent us and he has to be from us. What we have? We have a body. Therefore, he is bodily present there. Not only in spirit, you know, but bodily. That is why the Bible says in Peter that he was killed in the, physic in the physical body and yet made alive in the spirit and went down to hell to preach to those angels who are tied up with eternal chains of darkness. So I, that we do not know what was the necessity. We will not go into it because the Bible doesn't reveal. We know, we know who they are, but why he has to do it, we do not know. But I think God loves everybody, so he has to go and preach to them. And we do not know the results of that. All right? Now, Jesus Christ's bodily resurrection is very important. Bodily resurrection. Many people don't have that concept. Why it is bodily resurrection? Because he has to represent, as the high priest in the old covenant, has to be a human being, has to be a man, has to go into the thing, uh, into the holy of the holies to represent us. Jesus Christ is gone in the body. We can see him when we go to heaven. He will have the marks. He will have the wounds and he will be disfigured. You know, many people believe their gods, their prophets are most handsome, most beautiful, most lovable. But the Bible says in Isaiah 53, our deliverer, our God, because of our sins, he is disfigured and he was not looked upon and will not be liked to look upon. But that is the compassion. And love has a price. Love has a price. You have to pay the price. Jesus paid the price. So, blood and the high priest, two double. And that is why the song writer of Rock of Ages wrote this verse, you know, that Jesus is the double cure for sin. I think afterwards we can put up the song Rock of Ages. We can see the first line itself. We will say the blood and he will be the double cure for sin. 
And you see, whenever we see these hymns, old hymns, many people say, Aya, old hymn, who want to listen? But it's all written with meaningfulness. And the double cure is this supreme high priest of us who tasted death and went to heaven in the body of Number two, he shed his blood to tone and appropriate for our sins so that we are free. So let us abandon ourselves to Jesus Christ. Let's hold on to him. And that is why the songwriter is said, I love the old rugged cross. I will cling it to it till one day I will change it for a crown, he sang. You see, these are the beautiful hymns and songs that gives us the thing. So, Jesus Christ is our superior high priest. He is the supreme high priest. And he will plead our cause and will be blessed. May God bless you. Shall we pray? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this morning because you taught us so many important truths, Lord. A truth that many wise men did not understand. But simple people like us, you have revealed to us as you promised in the Bible, Lord. These things were hidden from the mighty, but to the simple people you revealed. And as a childlike faith, we believe this word, Lord, that you shed your blood for the removal of our sins and you went bodily into the heaven so that we can have an advocate to plead our cause. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have forgiven us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are still pleading for us. And we know all power, authority, dominion is given to you. And you are able to do what all you want to do. Nothing can stop it, Lord. We thank you and praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen.